In the last video, we took it back to 1978 and how the 8086 microprocessor was introduced, creating a monumental shift in computing. While Intel in 1978 recorded $400 million plus worth of revenue and clearly had the semiconductor market cornered with the x86 architecture, a team across the pond was cooking up something revolutionary. Two gentlemen by the names of Chris Curry and Herman Hauser founded Acorn Computers in 1978. As part of the BBC's computer literacy project, Acorn built and sold over 1.5 million BBC microcomputers. This initiative led to the first ARM processor called the ARM-1, where the reference model built by Sophie Wilson and Steve Ferber was written in just 808 lines of code. At the time, ARM stood for Acorn Risk Machine, but quickly evolved to be Advanced Risk Machine. ARM was designed to be smaller, cheaper, and consume less power than other architectures like x86. In order to understand how, let's go deeper. As mentioned, ARM utilizes a RISC architecture. RISC uses a small set of simple and general purpose instructions where each is designed to execute in a single clock cycle. These instructions are typically a fixed size, for example 32 bits, which simplifies fetching and decoding. Aside from the basics of RISC, the ARM-1's pipelining allowed for it to start executing the next instruction before the previous one was even completed. With a 32-bit instruction set, the ARM-1 performed operations with a higher level of precision and efficiency compared to many other processors in the market. Although a step in the right direction, Ferber and Wilson continued to improve by building the ARM-2 core, which featured an average of 6 million instructions per second, making a 2x improvement from the ARM-1. Post-ARM2, a joint venture occurred in 1990 where companies like Acorn, Apple, and VLSI formed ARM Limited, bringing together 12 ARM architects. In 1991, Sir Robin Saxby joined the company as the first chairman and CEO. This was huge because after a flop with the Apple Newton in 1993, ARM came to the realization it needed to license its architecture to many companies in order to gain upfront cash flow and receive royalties on the back end. This led to ARM in 1993 penning a deal with companies like Texas Instruments and Nokia to implement the ARM 7 processor. Since then, the rest is sort of history, and ARM chips are now being used in 99% of the world's smartphones. In 2022, a new CEO, Rene Haas, has taken over, and ARM still continues to operate in 21 countries with more than 6,000 employees. This has been ARM in just a few minutes. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.